Hey, what's up guys? We've got an extra special project tonight. Courtesy of Doug Gray over at D. Gray Drafting and Design. And he has sent me this kit to make these lovely 3-inch machinist clamps. Now, I've never really got to make anything off a drawing before, and thankfully this drawing is, is awesome. Like He's got all the layout for every little, uh, every little piece in there and what you should get out of it. He's even got some very visually, aesthetically approving... <laughs> uh, pictures on how to go about a lot of these uh, procedures so I can honestly not wait to get started on this it's been sitting on my bench for a few months now sorry about that Doug as it as things turn out sometimes life just kind of gets uh, gets in the way or is it the other way around anyways so Doug sent me the whole kit he's got uh, a bunch of 12 L14 got a bolt all in three quarter three eighths and five sixteenths He's got some 3 16 drill rod, which I believe will be for the handle. And then there's a couple brass nubbins here. I'm not really sure what that's for. I guess the, some is for the end of the handle, and I can't remember what else. It comes with all the hardware and everything you're going to need to make these clamps. So I think we're going to actually start out with the drill press. I've already started deburring some of these in my haste. He suggests in the back gluing two at a time together. I had some Loctite 495. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure it's, yeah, it's done. So I'm considering, I'm going to clamp these together really good after a good deburr. And I'm just going to put a couple little welds on there and we'll gang these up and drill them and drill them and ream them all at the same time. I'm going to set up, these are all nicely marked and everything already too, I, I presume laser etched. So we just gotta find the center. And thank you, Shadows, for making me not be able to see anything. Not even close. <laughs> I may actually even just <laughs> try again here. Need more light. Dying flashlight to the rescue. Try to get that as close to dead nuts as possible. That feels good. Oh shit, maybe not. That's not bad. That's pretty good. And rinse and repeat. All right. So what we're gonna do now is clamp these together really, really snugly and accurately. Hopefully, a little bit closer than you know than not accurate. Then I'm gonna put a couple little knock just beads on there, weld, just to hold them all together. All right, so this is actually probably the flattest surface in this whole shop. If you do get a little bit of glob weld under there, you're gonna have to file that flat so that everything stays flat on there. Also, I put a little bolt here just to ensure that uh, nothing crazy happens. And if you do do it this way, make sure you hold on to that shit. <laughs> And these are drilled one size under quarter inch for uh, reaming. You know what? I'm going to pile up these first. Yeah, I should have just drilled these all at once and then upsized it. I never even thought of that. Guess I should have read the instructions after all. Easy peasy. In my opinion, this is the best way to do it. Best 
safest. You know, if you can clamp it down, it's better. Obviously, that's a little better, but surefire way to get these guys to stay put. Weld them. Now, of course, if you don't have a welder, then then I guess you'll have to go the route of crazy glue. But uh, be very careful. <laughs> That's all I could say about that. All right, well those guys are all done, minus a little bit of tiny bit of deburring, but uh, for the most part, there's the frame. So now we got all these done, we're gonna move up the list here. And there's a whole bunch of these standoffs or uh, spacers. So I'm gonna try it one way, and if, it, and if it works, then we're gonna continue that way. I'm gonna cut out uh, two at a time on the bandsaw, and then stick them in a collet, and then do both ends and then part them and then do them separately, I guess. I'll try that out. We got our 5 16 MT3 collets. It's one thing I like about this build, I have all the collets for it, so. Face it off. And according to our illustrious tap chart, 1024 requires a number 25 drill. Number 25 drill. Just gonna park this off to size. Get about an inch of stick out a little better, an inch and an eighth or so. We'll just get that over there until it gives some resistance. And that's about a one thou thickness. Now I did have a slight problem with this. The plates are a little bit thinner than specified in the drawing. So I'm gonna have to go a little bit on the shorter side. So I'll bring that over. One, two. Plus the thickness of the cutter. Yeesh, that is really, really close, but I think we'll be okay. Wow, this stuff is actually It's not even oil, man. Holy cow. Works really good. Okay, that's my attempt to look like a professional here. Oh, yeah. And since we got the one nice machined end on there, we'll just flip it over and take it off the back side here to appropriate length. So the biggest side is probably due to the saw cut. Actually, 157. Or one, one inch 57 thousandths. 58, okay. And our last one being 992 thousandths. Touch off here. Put our indicator back here again. And using our indicator, face it off to proper length. It's kind of looking like our hole is a little cockeyed there. But if we did that right, it should be the proper length. Oh, two thou. Oh, by two thousandths. All right, so now as you can see, I've already done a couple of these. That's kind of how I know that the plate was just a little too thin. For this part, it was actually measured in at 104 thousandths. Not a big deal. What was a big deal was my crappy Mastercraft taps. Like, uh, this thing is just a total utter, utter piece of garbage. That thing is in there so friggin' crooked. Plus, the, this is not even a, it's just a set screw. 
So you can't even uh, stick it in your drill. Maybe it comes out of there. I don't know. No. And when you're tapping a whole bunch of stuff, you want some good taps. So I went ahead and I bought some good taps. And honestly, I'm a little disappointed with this one too. It's still not quite straight. And it came to my house. This. But the taps are like, you know, noticeably way sharper. So that's what we're going to do next. And this piece, I don't know, it's like an LFA tap holder or whatever. And this piece actually comes to the thing you can stick in your drill press. Or you can use the center. So I'm going to try this one out. We're going to go ahead and tap that before I turn it down. Because, uh, yep, Blondie Hacks was right. If you tap this after turning this shoulder, it definitely does flare out. Kudos to you, Quinn. Now back to our regularly scheduled program. So, correct tap drill size, check. Good tap with a floating tap holder, I guess you call that. Check. Lube, check. That is so much easier, oh my God. A little, little chamfer. Actually a fairly large chamfer. That's about right. Yeah, no, nope, a little bit more. Just really don't want to overdo it and then have like a knife edge there. That's probably okay, I think. Honestly, it looks like it needs more still. Well, we're gonna stop right there. If we need a little more, we'll get more. In the meantime, having previously set my zeros, should be just a matter of taking a small pass off of here. And it's just a hundred thou off each side. Hundred and one thousandths. That's the first pass. That took a majority of it off. I'm going to take 62 thou off there, and that was a 60 thou off the over, overall diameter. And there's still quite a bit. Oh, there we go. We're actually just a shade bit under from that return pass. So I think we're good there. A quick touch up with the file. Yes, I know there should be a little bit of a thing on there for the handle, but... And if everything worked out good, that should sit nice and flat on there. And it doesn't. Yeah, she's down. That's better. All right, well, <laughs> now you've seen what that's all about. I got uh, to do another eight sides just like that, so I'll get back to you. All right, well, let's see if we got all our holes lined up here. That'd be pretty good. Oh yeah, beautiful. Been having problems with the chamfers. I'm just, uh, I don't know, that chamfer thing could be just a little bit on the big side. But so far, they are starting to look like something. That one's good. Some schmutz in the threads, I think, there, but I don't know, we're past it. Well, it looks pretty good from here. Yep. All right. Long one's done. These ones will be the last two on the list. And they'll be to, to accommodate the bottom jaw there. <laughs> now other than the length of these and the parting off uh, part, these go exactly the same, with the one simple difference is that they're short enough that I can tap them all the way through in one go. So that's cool. And I'm really liking this little tap wrench. It's super easy to use. I love it. That's about it. All right, well, that concludes all these little guys. Our little uh, standoffs out of the 5 16ths 12L14 are all made up and fit nicely. And that's the little bit I got left. I think we are going to go... Yeah, that looks good. There. We'll also 
to set our zero. That was absolute rubbish. Okay, so this should be quite a bit better. The smaller you make your radius on the end of your tool, the more likely it is to dull really bad. So, we'll do another cut here. We got a lot to take, got quite a bit to take off. Five, thirty-five, thirty-seven. I'm trying to dial in twenty-four thousandths. I don't know. We'll try. This lead is touchy. And I left. We'll go an extra two thou in the back there to clean up the face, and then that should be it for this side. Oh, one thou over. Can you believe that? One thou. We're shooting for three thirteen. <laughs> Well, we'll probably, oh, we've got a nice finish, nicer finish at least. That'll probably be one thou under, but the drawing says that's okay. Yeah, one thou under. That's fine. Technically, a 3 sixteenths, or was this 5 sixteenths is 312 and a half, so that's probably still a little snug. Yeah, it is. Oh, just on the end. No, that's, that's about as good as it's going to get. That's a half thou. <laughs> Clear and fit there. Yeah, just a little chamfer. Oop, I almost buttered that up. Just trying to break that edge there. And that side is done. All right, now measuring this, you got to leave 537 in the middle. We got plenty of room here oh yeah oh look at that cut it's pretty tight for a ruler okay so we're looking at 883 we're looking for 537 346 so we just got to face off 31 thou with that and the rest of it is needed over again son of a now that's a light shave right there <laughs> stop bang on And that should be that piece done. All right, well, there's our little hinge pins. It worked out pretty good, actually. Next item of business is, I believe, we could either do this or we could do the screw. I think this is the probably going to be, these two are going to be the most problematic. Now, this is the piece that will go on the end here that holds the screw. That, oh, I guess it goes this way. That will essentially drive that jaw closed. I'm kind of looking at this, and I think I'm going to make those 
because these are going to be sticking out quite a ways on the hinge so i don't see no reason why these shouldn't stick out as well yeah so i'm going to add an extra you know 50 thou or whatever to that or even just make it the same same width as this because you know us ukrainians we got to make everything far more tough all right, well, there's these two little pieces. I didn't film them because they're essentially exactly the same as these, just a little bit longer. We still got a 3 8 uh, or 5 16 hole and a 3 8 16 tap to go through there. But we're going to get to that a little bit later. Now, actually, uh, I buggered one of these up. I don't know what happened exactly, but I ended up bumping the compound and inadvertently setting off the next apocalypse. But yeah, I ended up like 10 thou, or over 10 thou short, or small. One of these is actually mild steel can you tell moving on so we're going to start turning this little guy and this guy's going to have a through hole or 1024 tapped hole there but uh now we're a little bit short on the 12l14 we're gonna have to uh part these off in the lathe but again more or less the same drill as these guys now a lot of this build is involves a lot of repetition you know drill tap turn to a shoulder so once i get done with this we're going to figure out how to drill the sides and uh flatten the sides which we might use the four jaw for all right so i believe i got it in there well i gotta tell you that's a, quite the convoluted uh, way to set up a part like you gotta use two indicators minimum i try to sh try to run you through it it actually took me about 20 minutes to get it right okay so first i was having problems with my indicator i busted the freaking glass on it because the needle came loose and it was just spinning around in there so I had to do this a couple times. Anyways, to find center in this direction, so you get that set to your zero or whatever. Then you got to mark a zero down here as well, so that every time you go back to the exact same point that you left off, you find your low spot, wherever it may be. So it's right about there. And it's bouncing or fluttering around a little bit, but then spin it around, get right back to your zero over here. Yeah, see, it's changed just a scotch, but on, you know, one or two thou, I'm not going to freak out about it. And then do the same thing with here. Well, you don't really need this for this part because I got I turned the shoulder already, so that kind of worked out for me because you got two flats there already. And then also this you could use a normal indicator for. So you have to get this running straight, and then make sure you got that all running true as well. So. spot low spot whatever so yeah we're pretty damn close right there a little tightness on there and that feels good See what it looks like. Well, we're definitely hitting right on top there. We would have found out in a hurry. I'll admit, I've never done it like this before, so this is new to me too. I could not figure out a better way to do it, so I hope this guy helps you guys out. Or I'm an idiot. I'm gonna go right straight on to 5 sixteenths. Once you get past that rough part, it ain't too bad. Whew. Now there's no way I'm sticking that chamfer tool in there. So I'll just have to deburr this the, the old fashioned way. Honestly, I forget I have this damn thing. It works really good. <laughs> Yeah, it looks actually looks pretty good. Okay, better wrench. Much better. All right, a little bit of deburring in there. I'll probably stick it back in the collet. Here's one of my shop made bolts that I made quite some time ago now. And starts good. Oh yeah, nothing wrong with that at all. And that looks actually really good. Yeah, so I bought all new tabs for this little project. 
This is the second one. I just finished it. Now, I gotta tell you, it is like night and day in comparison to these Mastercraft ones. I could have pretty much just power tapped that and been done in like a minute. I believe this one is most likely the 12L14 because it was completely effortless. And here's the bolt. Oh yeah, it's even better than the first one. That's looking good and straight too. Nice. All right. Now these fellas, these ones are gonna be a little different. We're gonna have to turn some flat sides on them. This shouldn't be too bad. I've already gone ahead and drilled and tapped this hole, but I did not machine in the, sh the shoulders yet. Those we will do after. All right, so we're all dialed in there. And according to the drawing, we gotta shave 75 thou off there and drill and ream for a quarter inch. Thank you, Doug, for that uh, email you sent me. <laughs> Saved me a bit of trouble. Now the drawing specifies plus or minus five thou, so so it's not too super accurate. We'll just take little cuts off the, off the bat here. We're actually the whole thing. We're going to take little cuts. And we'll start off with the ten thou, just to see how she acts. You could use the dial indicator back here, or just use the compound. I'm gonna use the compound, it's just easier to deal with. You don't have to unlock your carrot. So. I'm just hoping that uh, the reamer can span that gap. It's, not, it's just a little hole, so. Normally you'd use a spiral reamer or a spiral fluted reamer for this sort of thing. Yeah, I don't got one, so we'll just take it easy. I really like some cutting oil for this, but. Sweet. All right, so I got a, I got an old Chinese, you know, one of those ten, five dollar end mills or whatever. You can use a piece of a quarter inch drill rod, whatever you like. But the, the goal is to just try to get that running straight, so that when you're facing it off, it's dead nuts or close to it with the hole. All right, so these guys turned out really good. And using the compound as our guide, we pretty much hit that dead on the money at 600 thousandths. So now we just gotta turn these little shoulders in there. And I'm gonna go about it just a little bit differently. Now I've got the compound set to 90 degrees. We've got our set our zero here and our zero here. And I've already done one side of this. We're also making sure not those corners don't uh, go into the gaps there. Now I've had something of a revelation on this, that if you do it in this fashion, like you're only going 100 thou or so in, in distance, so it's not that big a deal to use the compound. Plus, if all your zeros are set, then you could pretty much production line this without uh, any problem at all, just by hitting the same numbers as, as you started off with. So, so I'm just gonna do this really quick, actually. And that's about all there is to it. I guess the proof is in the pudding though.
shooting for six or three hundred thirteen thousandths. Well, actually, three twelve would be better. So I'm thinking this might be a little bit on the big side, but and I'm hitting that number every single time doing it this way. Now I wish I would have done that right in the beginning instead of fiddling around trying to pack in an indicator on either side of the carriage. That's just so much faster. So I'll probably take it down just a scotch. And that's it. And there's our little, uh, I forget what it's called, thing. All right, so I think we have enough pieces here. So we could definitely do a little bit of a test fit up. Well, looking at the picture. Wait a minute. Yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> Ooh, that is snug as a bug. Look at that. And I think this guy gets some screws too. Yeah, that's supposed to have washers on it though. Those actually feel really good. Yeah, it's not bad. It looks a little bit short maybe or something there, but I think that'll be just fine. You know, there's the, made those stick out just the, the same as these guys, just for a little extra sturdiness. And that's where the screw will go down in there. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Now let's see if we can do the next one without talking in high speed. So that's about the max I can fit into one video, guys. So that's actually, that was a little more involved than I expected it to be. But fear not, I've already got lots of this stuff, other stuff done. It's just like, we won't all fit. So stick around till next time. Yeah, one thing I don't like about those collets is they... So for some reason, this handle has been giving me hell problems. Here we go. Thanks again, Doug, for this awesome little project. These are going to be very valuable tools in my shop. I can guarantee you that. So until then, thanks for watching.